So today's video is called putting fractions and decimals on a number line. And before we get started, I am nursing a cold, so I might sneeze or sniffle. I might sound a little funny today on today's video, but don't buy me. So how do you break a number line into decimal parts? So we know that in between zero and one whole, you can actually break the number line into what are called tenths. So you can actually break it into 10 pieces. So if I were to kind of draw like a fraction bar, I could actually break from 0 to 1 into 10 pieces or 10 parts. And so then here would be my 10 lines. So from 0 to 1, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 parts. And I can actually do the same thing between another whole number, between 1 and 2. So I can go another break it into another 10 parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and if you actually take the picture of my my fraction bar and lay it over it you see how I've broken it into 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 pieces so when you're trying to break a number line into decimals the first thing you do in between whole numbers and you is you break it into 10 parts and then every line or every piece is a tenth so I know from 0 to this first piece would be 1 tenth and then after that you'd have 2 tenths then 3 tenths then 4 tenths then 5 then 6 tenths then 7 tenths then 8 tenths then 9 tenths and then 10 tenths or one whole and then if I'm going from one hole to two holes, I would have one hole and one tenth. And then one hole and two tenths, one hole and three tenths, one hole and four tenths. So you can kind of see the pattern here. So if I was going from two to three, it would be two and one tenth, two and two tenths, two and three tenths, and so on and so on. So the important thing to remember is you're breaking a number line into decimal parts. You want to start by breaking it into tenths. So how do you place numbers on a number line? So I want to look at my decimals, and I see I have 3 and 62 hundredths, 3 and 9 tenths, 3 and 75 hundredths, and then 4, ho four holes. So when I look at my, my numbers, I notice that I don't have anything bigger than 4, and I don't have anything less than 3. So my number line just pretty much needs to go from 3 to 4. But you know, with all number lines, you want to put arrows at the end, because um, number lines go on forever because numbers go on forever. So this is showing that even though I'm only showing from 3 to 4, that it's not a picture of the whole number line. So again, I have to break my number line into 10 equal parts or 10 equal pieces. So I have one piece, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So once I've broken them into the 10 pieces, now I can start throwing in my other numbers. So I know from 3 to 4, in between there, halfway in between 3 and 4 would be 3 and a half. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be 3 and a half, or 3 and 5 tenths. And then I look at my first number up here that I'm trying to put on the number line, and that's 3 and 62 hundredths. Well, I know that 3 and 62 hundredths is going to be somewhere in between um, 3 and 6 tenths and 3 and seven tenths because if I were to add zeros at the end of these it would be three and sixty hundredths and three and seventy hundredths and I know sixty two is in between sixty and seventy so I know that three and sixty two hundredths has to be somewhere in between three and six tenths and three and seven tenths and I know halfway in between three and six tenths and three and seven tenths would be three and sixty five hundredths so that lets me know that three and sixty two hundredths would be somewhere um, in between 3 and 6 tenths and 3 and 65 hundredths. So I can say 3 and 62 hundredths is about here on the number line. Then I have 3 and 9 tenths. Well, if this is 3 and 7 tenths and this is 3 and 8 tenths, and then that means this here is 3 and 9 tenths. So there's my next number. Then I have 3 and 75 hundredths. And I know that's going to be in between 3 and 7 tenths and 3 and 8 tenths. And it's actually going to be halfway in between. 3 and 7 tenths and 3 and 8 tenths, so there's 3 and 75 hundredths. And then I have 4, and that's the same as 4 holes, so that would be the number 4. So I've correctly placed all 4 of these numbers on my number line. So I want to do the same thing here. I look here and I've got some positive numbers and some negatives, so I definitely want to make sure I've got 0 on my number line. 
because zero separates your positive numbers from your negative. And I see that I have a negative one um, point zero, and then I have zero and a, um, five tenths, negative zero and eighty nine hundredths, zero and sixty three hundredths, and then negative zero and four tenths. And if I just look at the whole numbers in the front, I see zeros and then I see one one. So I know that none of my numbers are going to be bigger than positive one and none of them will be um, smaller than negative one. So I know that my number line needs to go somewhere between negative one and positive one. Again, I've got to break it into decimal parts. So I'm going to get into the ten uh, fractional pieces in order to help me find where the other numbers are. So then I'm looking for negative four tenths first. So this is negative one tenth, the second line is negative two, negative three tenths, so then I know negative four tenths would be here. So there's my first number. Then the next number I want to look for is zero and sixty-three hundredths. Well I know that it's positive, so that means it's going to be to the right of zero. And I know it's sixty-three, so it's going to be somewhere between six and seven. So if I check first, it's usually easiest to kind of find the halfway point. So this is one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. So if five tenths is here, that means six tenths would be the next line, and then I know seven tenths would be the line after that, and I know that sixty-three hundredths would be somewhere in between six tenths and seven tenths, and they're going to be actually closer to six tenths than seven tenths. So then it's going to be about here. Then my next number is negative eighty-nine hundredths. Well, I know that's going to be somewhere between negative eight and negative nine tenths. So I know if this is negative four, this would be negative five, negative six, negative seven. So that means negative eight tenths would be here, and then negative nine tenths would be here. And I know negative eighty nine hundredths would be closer to negative nine tenths. So I know negative eighty nine hundredths would have to be somewhere around here. Then I have five tenths, and I already see that that's right here on my number line. And then I have negative one whole, which gives me this number here. And so now I've correctly placed all five of these numbers on my number line, which means I've actually put them in order from least to greatest. So how do you break a number line into fractional parts? So when you're trying to break a number line into fractional parts, it helps to actually use fraction bars to do it. So I want to first break this first number line into half pieces. Well, of course, you know that if you're trying to show half, you're just going to show two pieces. So I'm actually going to break this little section here into halves. So I have one half here and I have another half here. And so I know that in between negative one half and negative two would have to be negative one and a half. And then I can actually put another fractional bar here to show another set of halves in between negative one and zero. And I know in between negative one and zero would have to be negative one half. So then if I want to break it into thirds, again, I'll do the same thing, only this time, instead of showing halves, I'm going to show thirds. So I'm going to show a fraction bar showing thirds. So I'm going to take this piece here between positive one and positive two and break it into three, three pieces. And so then I know in between positive one and positive two, this first piece here would be one and one third. And that means the second piece here would have to be one and two thirds. And then the next piece would be one and three thirds, which is the same as two whole. Then in between two and three, again, I, st I can still break it into um, halves, I mean into thirds. And so then in between two and three, I would have two and one third, and then two and two thirds. Then I want to break this one into fourths. So again, I'm going to use a fraction bar to break it into fourths. And then in between negative four and negative three, I can draw fourths, and then in between negative three and negative two, again, I can draw fourths. And it's actually easier if I go this direction because they're negative. So if I have negative two here, that means this would be negative two and one fourth. This would be negative two and two fourths, which is also reduced to negative two and a half. And then this would be negative two and three fourths. And then we have negative three. Then again, this would be negative three and one fourth. Negative three and two fourths, which again can be reduced to negative three and a half and then this would be negative three and three fourths. So when you're trying to break a number line into fractional parts, it helps to actually draw a fraction bar in between your whole numbers so that you can easily pick out those fractional pieces. 
So a common question that you'll see on the EOG is they'll ask where something is located on the number line. And so right here we have where is A located. And what they do is they give you a couple of the numbers, but not all of them. So it takes, it's, uh, basically it's up to you to kind of fill in the blanks. So if you kind of look here, we have zero here and then negative one here. So we know that there's a space in between zero and negative one. And you know that it's halfway in between those. So that means this would have to be negative one, which lets me know that they've broken my number line into half size pieces. And to see if it works, we can see, well, this would be zero, which means this would have to be one half, and this would have to be one whole, and then this would have to be one and a half. So it does work breaking it into half size pieces, which means A has to be located at one and a half. So then on the second number line, again, we want to know where is A located. So this one seems like it's a little bit harder, but I see this negative one and four fifths, which kind of clues me in that it's probably broken into fifth size pieces. And if I were to take a fractional bar and draw that into fifths, that means going from negative one to here, I can see, well, I have negative one here, and that means this line here would be negative one and one fifth, and this would have to be negative one and two fifths, this would be negative one and three fifths, makes that negative one and four fifths, which does work. And then that would make this negative two. So that's the case if I keep going with the pattern, this would be negative two and fifth. This would be negative two and two fifths, which tells me that A is located at negative two and two fifths. So it's really about kind of filling in the blanks and kind of guessing and checking this to make sure that you've actually counted the numbers correctly on your number line. And you definitely want to make sure that however you're counting on the number line, that it actually does work with the numbers that they've already given you. So when you're trying to break a number line into decimal parts, you want to make sure you're breaking it into tenths. And then when you're trying to break it into fractional pieces, you want to actually draw fraction bars to represent it. Don't forget to teach the tiger something you learned in today's video.